Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on October 16th, 2023. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet, and welcome to The Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and a look at world weather. Always starting out here looking at our beautiful sun. Last 48 hours of imagery brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. And we do have one sizable, strong C-class solar flare to talk about that did produce a CME. You can see it in the last few frames there. Let's have a look at the last 48 hours incoming with a little earth to scale image here in comparison. A couple large plasma shots there on the left side and as well from that most recent C-class solar flare from Sunspot Region 3467. Looking at the last 48 hours outgoing. No major events here to look at, but look at that large plasma shot in the south. That was reported uh, two days ago. And then just recently today with this C-class solar flare, large plasma shot observed there. Looking at multi-spectrum at, at the last 48 hours of events, and as well pointing out the large coronal hole that has is now turning it away and is not at an earth facing direction interesting in the last few images in the northern region coronal hole developing having a look here 171 angstroms just some amazing images of our sun thank you solar dynamics observatory and thank you everybody for watching right now please don't forget to give a like and maybe give a share with your friends and family Having a look now at seven active sunspot regions on the Earth facing sun. And here are those sunspot regions in action with a few images missing there. Current space weather conditions, there are none to report. Solar winds are coming in at 324 kilometers per second as we speak. Solar X ray flux. In a heightened C range after seeing a strong C class solar flare and a long duration C class geomagnetic activity very low right now. Observing here the highest frequency affected from those long duration C class solar flares today. And here is a look at the NOAA space prediction spiral showing that CME taking off from the sun and the little green circle is earth in these diagrams so it looks like we're set to get a glancing blow 19th into the 20th yeah 19th into the 20th a glancing blow from that coronal mass ejection from the c-class solar flare ISPA space prediction spiral showing the same thing just with a different diagram here. Little yellow circle here is planet Earth. Now let's have a look at the space weather projection. This is our sun looking at Alaska 3, showing that bright star on the right hand side that is Mercury, that is a planet coming in for behind the sun closer look at the most recent CMEs the last 48 hours one from the north one from the south and then one from the west cresting in in the last few images there Lasco 2 just another look a closer look under another light again three CMEs to report but nothing Major has been thwarted our way. That small CME in the last few images set to give us a glancing blow October 19th into the 20th. Watch for our solar winds and space weather conditions to change and possible increase in earthquakes. Now let's get to earthquakes. Started off the day with a sizable 6.4 earthquake. Adak, Alaska at 197 kilometer depth. And it's pretty active through the region as you can see here, even through the peninsula of Kamchatka, 5.2 there off the coast of active volcanoes there. Also, Port McNeil, Canada reporting a 4.9 earthquake today. And lots of activity up into northwest um, California, Humboldt Hill, California. 
And as well, Petrolia, California, with a 4.8 magnitude earthquake, that's the largest I've seen in the past couple months. It's been pretty quiet across California as of late. Not much to report across the North American plate. Central America, pretty quiet in my mind. 4.2 there, Nicaragua. Caribbean plate, Virgin Islands, 3.9 earthquake there. South America, yeah, a little bit of activity here. Salta, Argentina, 5.0 being the largest through the region. Quiet across the African plate and the Atlantic, up into Europe. And then we get to the Indian plate here, 4.7. Two of them to report there, South Indian plate. And as well, east of Taiwan there, 5.7 magnitude earthquake. And then we get to where our deep earthquakes occur. And Fiji region reporting a 4.1 magnitude 595 kilometer depth so that's our deepest earthquake the past 24 hours the deepest we've seen in quite a few days usgs is still reporting under 200 earthquakes in the 24 hour period so we are going through an earthquake lull and this is the last seven days for shakers across the world quick glance at a very active afghanistan and as well west ring of fire and way too quiet, in my opinion, through Central America, expecting something here to come. All that activity through Alaska doesn't surprise me with the active volcanoes through the Aleutian Islands, stretching to Kamchatka. Let's have a look at the SO2 particulates. So this is all the emissions sent from our volcanoes to the west there, across the West Pacific, mostly Kamchatka, and across the Aleutian Islands here. Lots of SO2 coming out of Mexico with Popopacatitl. Have a look here around the rest of the world. Australia. Parts of New Caledonia. Oeba. Aoba, sorry, volcano. Erupting there. And then looking at the southern hemisphere, quite a bit as uh, quite a bit of SO2 coming out of the southern hemisphere right now. This wasn't like this yesterday, so Again, as it's happened before, and just a surprise, there's been an eruption in Antarctica somewhere. Most likely, the mighty Erubus volcano, which is south of Australia, right in the peninsula there, through, uh, through Antarctica. Quite a bit of SO2 here. Sulfur dioxide emissions brought to you by all of our active and erupting volcanoes. Now let's get to world weather brought to you by windy.com looking across north america cold high pressure ridge moving in and then a alberta low moving in by thursday friday sweeping across eastern canada and another low will follow in behind that from the hudson bay and then a big high pressure ridge moves in behind that so we're going to see some pretty cool temperatures in the long range forecast here but not before a big system here develops for Sunday, the 22nd to the 23rd for the Atlantic provinces. It's going to bring some snow on the north side of that system. And then watch as a big system comes in from the west coast, B.C. and through Washington. Lots of moisture there and strong winds and waves associated with those systems. As posted here with daily events worldwide, look at the temperature transition here. Long range forecast. Some very cool temperatures straight across Western Canada and as well higher elevations southward into the United States. Have a quick look here at accumulation totals as Alberta will be seeing a dusting upwards of 10 to 20 centimeters through central Alberta. Not much in the south, but again, higher elevations. They're going to start to see the snow piling up with these cooler temperatures moving in. Welcome to winter 2023. Carrying on here for weather, overlooking Europe as we've got multiple systems affecting you over the next few days. Some gray days ahead for you right after this high pressure ridge moves out. Wednesday into Thursday, watch for these systems to come into the United Kingdom and Ireland. Strong winds, heavy rains associated, and I'm sure high and strong waves as well. 
as both the North Pacific and North Atlantic are gaining some energy. Long-range forecasts not really showing much of a change for Western Europe as those systems are penetrating the coastline. Overlooking Australia and the Southwest Pacific, Southeast Asia and India, monsoon rains calming down over there, no major typhoons developing throughout this forecast. Long-range forecast could see something here developing through the Central Pacific and it may make a beeline for Japan or northward just east of it. So heads up, stay tuned to Daily Events Worldwide. We'll keep you updated. Quick weather forecast here for y'all down under. Low pressure system on the east coast affecting New Zealand. And then watch as this low develops over Tasmania. It's going to bring some windy and wet conditions to southeast Australia. And then a low develops in the long-range forecast, lingering around, bringing scattered showers throughout the southern Australia. And now to look at world weather at a glance. Give you a glance at our upper-level winds right now. As the polar vortex is setting up, you can see some stronger winds and more circular motion developing here in the northern hemisphere compared to the last one I showed last week. Things have definitely changed. I can also say the same thing about the southern hemisphere right now. But it still does a look a little weird. As we have an interesting anomaly there in between mighty Erubus and New Zealand. I hope you enjoyed today's world update here with Daily Events Worldwide. If you did, please don't forget to smack that like button. Tell me how much you liked it in the comment section. Share with a friend. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily do. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.